Welcome back to the second part of our Lake Argyle experience. This week we kayak down the Ord River through some stunning gorges and see the start of wet season rolling in as it shows us just how this lake gets so full, have an absolute heart melting experience at Kangaroo Haven and set off on our next adventure to James Price's Point. And as if we hadn't had enough rain yet, we get trapped by some flash flooded roads as the wet shows us what it's really like trying to travel and move around in this part of the world. Hey Dunks, what are we doing? Okay, we are going kayaking today. We're going to paddle down the Ord River. It's used, it can be a three day paddle, but we're only going to do a good couple of hours, explore the Ord River Gorge. So we've come to just under the dam wall. There's something like an Olympic sized swimming pool being pumped under this thing every minute, every second, something ridiculous like that. So there's a decent flow of water for us to contend with on the way back. Although we are behind the dam, all the stories they were telling yesterday when we were on the cruise about water levels rising and so on. I think I was put the car a little bit higher up there and park it in the shade under a tree. And then yeah, get into the day, go for a paddle. So it just worked out one of these paddles has got the slightly blow broken in transit and now we'll keep sort of falling out if you try and pull on each other so probably not the worst because you just keep a bit of pressure in the center and it won't come out but Sophie's just informed me that it's my paddle <laughs> and I'll be using this today so I need all the help I can get because we've got separate kayaks and as I'm sure you guys can imagine Duncan is way stronger than I am so I'm always <laughs> trying to catch up so is exhausting. <laughs> you can put your chair on yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just fishing for crocs with my feet, <laughs> cooling them off. How nice is this gorge? What do you Beautiful. keep saying it's, it is? I wasn't going to say that <laughs> on camera, but it's gorgeous. <laughs> That's coming out of my mouth sounds lame. <laughs> but it is gorgeous. It is. And it is a gorge. And dad joke, gorgeous. This is heaven. We're just drifting, paddling, super easy. You watch this space though, in about an hour's time when we're coming back, we're going to be hammering it hard. I 
have seen as we've gone around a couple of these corners, crocs slip into the water though, a couple of the freshies. So I know freshies will leave you well enough alone, but we'll see. <laughs> Reckon, Soph, you've discovered the bird toilet of the, the Ord River. The perfect rock, apparently, for every bird's toiletting needs. <laughs> Just fly into the middle of the water, sit on that edge, and then paint the rest of it white. It's, it's really white this side too. <laughs> Each side, Jesus. Yeah. It must be popular. It's a toilet with a great view. Give it some gas though, come on, give it some gas. Oh. Try not to trap into me though, where are you going? I'm doing it. Where are you going? Oh. Yeah. Well controlled, I was expecting you to go face first into those rigs. I think that is a little croc though. That was really cool. Where do you go? Somewhere under the boat. That was cool though. I didn't expect to see one just chilling on the, the top there. All calm as anything. The photographer in me, or the videographer in me, really wanted to get up close and get a good shot of that. Although that probably would have meant me putting my hand underwater and following it with a GoPro, which is not the best idea. Very touristy thing to do though. <laughs> I don't want to be one of those guys who gets written up in the newspaper as dumb tourist does this. much nature we've seen. I mean, I'm, I'm probably not surprised because this is a top end and it just seems to be untouched wilderness Australian beauty. But we've seen turtles, fish, crocodiles, everything in the last like half an hour just coming down here. Bird life is insane. Yeah, really nice way to see it. I feel like if you're on a cruise or in a boat or anything like that, you often find it hard to see much because you're just flying along and you're, you know, you're a man-made machine just hammering with the motor. It's just nature, nothing. Not a bird, not a plane, not, a, I was gonna say not a bird then. Not a bird, not a plane, it's Superman, no. Um, not a bird, not a plane, not a car, not another voice. Just insects and birds. This is perfect. As you can see, we are rocketing along and not paddling at all, which I really feel like I should be enjoying this more. But unfortunately, in the back of my head, all I can think of is the fact that we're going this fast without paddling down. How slow are we going to go going back up again when we're fighting against the current paddling? We've been looking for a spot to pull the kayaks in so that we can jump in for a swim. But so far, the whole way has either been steep rock face or Breeds like this. I'm not gonna lie, some parts of this river are easier to kayak back up the stream, and there's other parts where the current is so much stronger and it's so tiring. Don't always looks like he's finding it pretty easy. I found it interesting your paddling style coming uh, in the center of the water rather than on the edges like I'm doing. You notice I'm following the reeds? Yeah. It's because sometimes the shortest distance between two objects is in a straight line, especially when you've got this current hammering it in the middle. You go along the sides of the reeds, it takes so much of the energy out of it to just cruise along. <laughs> I, I promise you I I'm not paddling I know, I have been thinking, where's it going? Because it's so much longer and then I'll try and cut across the middle and the amount of energy I have to expel is huge. <laughs> What do you reckon, Soph? Pretty good spot for a Yeah, are you going to go in? Yeah. Not worried about crocs? No, 
Now that I know that freshwater cocks only eat insects and big fish and fish. They'll still bite you if you uh, if you mess around with them. Yeah. Just try not to step on it. You'll be right here. Yeah. Right there. Come on then. You can feel the current. It's pretty strong. As I knew, because I was in the kayak <laughs> and going full full throttle at some times and not really getting anywhere. to have a swim. Trusty factor 50, no less, because my fair English skin is, well, not faring very well today. Not in this Australian heat. My thighs in particular are getting really red and I don't want to have any long lasting burns or skin damage. So when I get back in the kayak, I'm going to cover my thighs with my t-shirt and hope I don't get any more redness. Yeah, nice enough. <laughs> How long have you had to wait for? Long enough for it to get so calm that I just had a turtle come and surface right next to my boat. Oh really? And just sit there for about five minutes looking at it and, oh. he, and he just looked at me, I looked at him and then he swam off. And I had the GoPro. You had the GoPro, oh. so another magical moment just for my head something really big that's why i came in here originally something really big move when i um paddled in at first and like went underwater so i think that was a when i say really big it was probably a crock about that size not huge Look at these tan lines. What yeah. are you doing, Woodman? I know. And that's with factor 50 on. Just on your front as well. Yeah. Wow. The coolest tan ever. Gym short tan. You. <laughs> wow. Oh dear. Yeah. I can't say much. I think. Uh, yeah. I think I got a little bit of front leg burn as well. Yeah. yeah. That looks worse on camera than I thought it did. Especially when you put the white next to it. Ooh. Yeah, right? Nothing else is burned though. No. Just just the legs, just the thighs. Anyway, we're back. Now I gotta get the car, bring it down, chuck these bad boys on top, that'll take a while. And then, and then we can have a beer. Yay! <laughs> beer time. Sophie went to get a beer. A beer each and came back with six. six. Well, so they do takeaways and I asked, can you get takeaways and just sit and eat and drink them out here? And you can. So $25 for six, whereas we would have paid seven dollars for one. Always chasing a bargain. Yeah. Although that thunder, yeah. I think the weather's definitely changing. Can you imagine still being on there and having to like paddle back in a thunderstorm? <laughs> no. Let's not waste any time, let's get into these bees. I think there's going to be a big storm here soon. Yeah, I'm not sure we'll be able to eat dinner outside tonight or cook dinner outside. No, no. See that? Oh, the storm's up here. Mm. Look at that wind. Cut it. Thunderstorm behind you. Eww. Best place to be, eh, so in a thunderstorm. Yeah. Pretty loud, but undercover, having a little beer, and chaos going on outside. It's so loud. 
It's so weird seeing everyone running to go for a swim in the thunderstorm. How good is it being in a thunderstorm undercover and just like being able to watch everything going nuts, rain coming down? You must admit, I don't know if it's the same year ground in England, but the year ground in Australia and Singapore. It's like heavy rain, everything fucking down. I don't know, it just brings me like such a sense of calm. It's almost like being inside on a rainy day and like looking out and being like, ah, you're warm, you're not getting wet. It's nice when you can see the storm outside and you're protected because you can admire it without having any of the negative, you know, getting wet, getting cold. It's, it's like when you're in a tent, right? Or you're in a tent or up there and you hear more tent than up there. You hear the rain going outside and you're like wrapped up in like a sleep bag and it's just really nice. Like you're warm. Yeah. But you can see the outside where there's nuts. I don't know. I don't know if there's a term for it or if it's mm. like. When the weather's going absolutely nuts, rain coming down, it's just, I love it. Big day has finally arrived. I've been waiting for this day for <laughs> a couple of days now. We are going to go and feed baby kangaroos. Yeah, baby kangaroos or joeys, joeys. and baby some other animals at Kangaroo Haven, which is a really cool place. It's a lady who sort of took it upon herself after, you know, hitting a kangaroo one day and a joey sort of falling out and nursing it back to health. Now she has made it her passion and she takes in animals from all over the area and nurses them back to health and then releases them on a special reserve that uh, the national parks have set up for her. So yeah, how cool is that? We get to go and see someone who's making a difference in their small way and also get to feed some joeys, which is really cute and really cool. So I'm pretty pumped as well. Yeah. Time. I love how his little paws just like holding the end of the bottle. Mm. Oh, Say hi. I'm not going to get anything from that. <laughs> I try. <laughs> He's a tricky one, isn't he? I wonder if he'll go for your chest as well. <laughs> Hey. There we go. Hey. hey. Now you've worked it out. So you were hungry the whole time. You're a natural dunk. Yeah. You're tired, too. I wonder if we get through the whole lot. Is that good? A bit more? Yeah? No? Yeah, a little bit more. 
Unfortunately, a lot of the animals here have become permanent residents as they have injuries that would prevent them from surviving if released into the wild. The most common one seems to be these guys who are completely blind from preventable human encounters. The lady explained that the reason these guys go blind is from stress and being fed cow's milk by humans when they try and take them as pets as joeys. The haven isn't limited to ruse and it does appear that she will take in almost any injured animal that comes to her, from usually local emergency services or just general people that find these guys. I honestly can't believe that this lady does all of this off her own back, getting no assistance from the local government. One of the main costs of the ever-growing haven is providing all these animals with food multiple times a day. She does, however, survive on donations from people like us who come to learn about the Haven. So if you are visiting, be sure to leave her something in return for the experience. You can stroke her, Ray. She's gentle, I stroke her. She's still, she won't hurt you. Hey, Graz. Good girl. She's so soft, she's just beautiful. Probably the only chance you get to stroke a boulder. guy. Come on, we're going to move you somewhere. Oh, don't just hide in there further. You don't want to go where we're going, you're going to get too hot. Come on. Hey, come on. There we go. How cool is that? A green tree frog? Mm, so cute. Found this little guy hiding between the, uh, the jerry cans. So we'll go find a nice, cool, dark place for him to chill till night time. Very cool though. And just like that, it's time to say goodbye to Lake Argyle and embark on the 12 and a half hour journey to James Price's Point. And then you just hit a massive because it's just downpour torrential my heart rate's going a little bit as well like whew. you'd hit a puddle of water would spray up traction control would come on and you'd be blind for a second or two mm. so yeah i reckon we just uh take a break let the water slow down a bit and then get back on the road the most amazing thing which I don't know if we're ever going to be able to capture it but if we can we absolutely will so we're surviving and so just notices that there's rain ahead and so we're I didn't even notice the rain it's just a literal wall of water it's like the road looked like it sort of stopped and went all misty and you could see it was like perfectly dry yeah and then like perfectly dry and then just this wall of wet moving and then we entered it and suddenly we're in turn the camera and look at this suddenly we're in this again Just nuts. You enter, you enter another world of crazy water and then you're back out in pristine bone dry again. It's insane. Just 
just literally just driving along. There's a big depression full of water. Okay, cool. Good bath for the old range. Looks like it's flowing a bit, uh, a bit more than the other one. Yeah, we might have a chat to the guys in front because if they're not going, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I mean we've got a bit more clearance, a bit more weight, but I still am a little bit mm. sus about crossing anything with the caravan on when it's you know fast moving water. It, it seems a bit dumb to me, but mm. I might go chat to these guys see what they're planning on doing. As you can see, there is so much water. That is a good like 20 meters width. <laughs> what do you reckon? I don't know, I think if it was just uh, just the ranger I'd go through for sure. I'm just feel a bit more worried with the caravan. Are we gonna give it a go? I reckon so. Okay, hazards on, that's what that sound is, that clicking sound. We've gotten to the third river crossing and I think this one is a bridge too far, as it were, quite literally a bridge too far. Because there's a car on the other side with their hazards on, we've stopped on this side and then there's a road train that looks like they've gone across and then they've turned on a jagged angle so their back sort of hanging off a bit and then the other bit's on dry land and it's just all blocked up and it looks like they ran into some issues. So if they've had issues, I don't know how confident I feel taking our caravan and car across it because you know they're heavy and they can probably go through much more than the van can on the back of this. So yeah, I think we're kind of stuck here now. We're sort of in between two, two river crossings. This is our third. I think if we kept going, I can only assume that there's more river crossings and we'll just be hitting more and more of this. So I don't even know if there's any point trying to risk it to get past this one because I really don't want to be swept down into that. And you know, that writes off the car, the van, everything. That's that's pretty much toast for the trip. So this may be um, where we camp the evening in the back, in the in yeah, just off the road here. Yeah. Hopefully the water level doesn't get any higher, but yeah, at least we've got our home with us. So if we need to kip, we can just jump in the back of the van. I mean, it's on a very odd angle, but road tripping, mm -hmm. wet season baby. You just don't know what's gonna happen. And this is kind of, it's it's frustrating, but it's also exciting. So I'm, I'm pumped, but not necessarily a good thing. <laughs> I don't know, you know when you're like- It's an adventure. It's like, wow, that's cool. And then it's like, oh, I'm stuck on the side of the road, <laughs> not going where I wanna be. But anyway, I'm gonna make the most of it. So I might go get out, check out the water. So guys, we did obviously eventually decide to cross the river after a couple of hours and the water level went down a little bit. And we did see a couple of locals going across in a very, very small and low to the ground car. So judge that it was probably safe for us to go as well. It's a bad little rest stop. Hmm, oh, it's nice and quiet at the minute. Plus it stopped raining. Imagine if it was still chucking it down right now. Could always be worse, couldn't it? Mm-hmm, got look on the bright side. Two jerry cans down. Hopefully that gives us enough case to get to Fitzroy Crossing because I think we've got about five to 10 k's worth of play in our range. Moment of truth. Yeah. How many k's do we have in the tank? We have 270 k's empty. Oof, okay, that's pretty good. As long as we drive efficiently, 
because it's 242 k's to the fuel station. Okay, so I've got to drive it 20 liters to the gap, 20 liters to every 100 kilometer, which yep. I do know, 20.5 to stay at that 270. So if we can keep to that, we can get there with what? 20 k's to spare? 20 k's to spare. All right. Righto. No pressure. No. Let's get into it. We've made it to the rest stop at 11.50. So, my driving's done for the day. Oh, 12 hours of driving later. And I'm pretty bloody knackered, so see y'all in the morning. Thanks for watching guys and join us in the next video where we explore the insane landscapes and red cliffs of James Price's Point. Look at this, this is nuts. Look at that beach behind me and once again experienced some crazy rain that almost trapped us at the bottom of the cliffs. This side of the beach, beautiful blue skies, sunny, happy days. This side of the beach, we are looking like the bowels of hell have opened. Hope that caravan's okay. We'll be the first to know about it if it's not. It's gonna fly <laughs> off that cliff down here. I must admit, oh, are you gonna hear that? And they're my tire tracks. They've just absolutely sunk into this mud going up. And you can see up there that the path's actually starting to wash away as well. So I'm concerned if I go up there, one tire's gonna drop when you can get stuck on that hill. Because that whole, our whole car would disappear into that. But that's, I guess I'm saying, one thing of rain has just washed out that much of the road. And I don't know if you get a sense of scale, but I could quite easily stand in that hole and my head would still be under it. And this is nuts, so <laughs> I'm avoiding the hell out of this side of the road. You would have thought by now that we would have learnt our lesson. Oh well, until next week, see you in the comments or on the road. Cheers. But you skidded right at the beginning and I was thinking, oh god. Oh god, here we go, fishtailing all the way up. Ooh. Yeah? That was good.